morning, everybody. It's I Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully, everyone's doing well today. So, been a little bit, needed a little bit of rest because hurricane season's starting. We still got severe weather ongoing. And before I mentioned that we might be getting a break, well, uh, yeah, that, I don't know if that's happening now. I was hoping by some chance it would slow down. Weather pattern had other plans here have slight risk all throughout the weekend and that's what we're going to quickly talk about today do have a wind threat at 15 percent hail threat no hatched risk thankfully for either of those and a very small five percent tornado threat that's been shifting a little bit it been originally it included little rock now it's kind of on the uh louisiana arkansas line it includes greenville mississippi as well anywhere north of the delta might need to be on the watch for the ch increased chance of maybe an isolated tornado or two we also have the Western High Plains on their typical madness as we get into the month of June. So overall, not an incredibly active Friday, but still something to watch very closely. The following day, tornado threat is pretty marginal as well. We're back towards West Texas again, towards New Mexico, and then also, of course, over towards Western High Plains. The main threats for tomorrow are going to be wind and hail when and hail has a hatch risk over towards colorado this is getting over towards hail country so this is about that time of year where we start to see that occur so not too surprising there then we see a severe threat push off to the north here including some of the northern plains states from central nebraska we have parts of eastern south dakota and parts of both north dakota and minnesota here so getting into the dynamics here looking at our 500 millibar mainly looking for a trough at this point or any signs of a short wave the short waves are usually shown better at 700 but sometimes you can pick up on them at five you do have a very weak trough right here it's not very stout so this also helps limit the severe weather threat usually the stronger the trough the better the forcing is and that's a key component to severe weather and like I said, you don't really see anything super stout at this point. I really think this is going to be a shortwave kind of mid-level based event as far as the trigger is concerned. And then as we continue to go forward, this is on to the next day. This is when we get towards the Western Plains and Western Texas. Pretty much going to be a similar deal here. We don't have a super stout trough that we're going to be dealing with. And that's why I think we're getting a little bit of a downturn with severe weather, but it doesn't mean that we aren't going to see any severe weather, for lack of a better term here. So again, let's go ahead and look at that 700 millibar region. And the main thing that you're looking for here is these little, these little squiggly lines or these uh, little ripples within our isobars here. If you see that associated with the trough, the the uh, lifting mechanism or the short wave trigger is more prime for severe weather if other conditions exist along with it the as we all know for anyone that's been watching for a while throughout the course of the last few months we're going to have plenty of moisture here the gulf of mexico has been pumping in moisture pretty much all year so i do have some confidence in there being severe weather here's our short wave right here for tonight we do have a secondary little area right here it's not in, like i said these aren't the most impressive parameters that i've seen for any event especially over the last couple of months i've seen far more impressive but still threat is still there so don't take it so don't take it lightly don't be scared but definitely keep an eye on the weather because one storm can go a step above all the others and it can cause plenty of problems and then as we get into saturday pretty much a similar deal you can see a little short wave pops up here towards the uh, panhandle states here and then up towards the western high plains and then as we get towards sunday we can't go to the full range of sunday but i do see evidence of what is likely to cause severe weather here i do think damaging winds might be the main threat just from this look alone and we look at the key parameter for tornado genesis that is the low level jet so the main thing i'm looking for right here is an area where we get up to about 30 knots and also directional shear we don't have a lot of it that's one thing we don't have a lot of directional shear if we had something that was kind of pushing a little bit more this way and was a little bit stronger i would be a bit more concerned about that tornado threat the timing just doesn't really match up or when those storms are anticipated to develop so 
good news there. So, like I said, maybe an isolated tornado for tonight. Wouldn't expect a lot out of it. And then as far as the following day is concerned, don't have much in the way low-level jet available. Also, a thing to make note of here on the mountains, typically you would want to look more so towards the mid-level jet versus low-level jet. It's kind of It makes uh, forecasting a little bit more difficult there. But you can see a couple pockets here and there, so 2% area does make sense. As far as the following day is concerned, don't really see much in the way low level jet, but of course it usually will start to ramp as we get towards sunset, so we'll still have to see what Sunday ends up presenting for us, but there's a decent little bit of flow here at this time of day, so could spike up to where we would need it to be to have some kind of concern there. Now, as far as the dew points are concerned, like I said before, no real surprise, we're gonna be dealing with incredible amounts of moisture throughout the weekend. Of course, as I mentioned with today's setup, especially with it being over towards Arkansas, Louisiana, plenty of moisture available. Towards the Western Plains, I do think this, kind of, I think this will help lean into more of a hail threat. As we get into the following days, Really, this moisture return is going to determine a lot. And as, in regards to the threat for the following day, I definitely am kind of leaning into that hail damaging wind threat, especially the hail threat. Then on the following day, we actually get a very uh, substantial moisture return over here towards the northern plains. And I do think that will help aid in the development of maybe a couple extra cells that could maybe produce tornadoes. Looking at the surface temperature, that's going to be a key component here. So we're looking at our temperature spread here. We had dew points in the 60s over here towards this region. If we have temperatures that are in the 70s, mid 70s, we might have something there. We might be cooking with something there. We definitely have that going on over here, but I do think this temperature spread might be enough to kind of keep things a little bit more limited. Forcing's already limited here too, which also kind of works in our favor. But if we go to the following day, massive increase in temperature we get into those 50 degree temperature zones with 80 degree or 50 degree dew points with the 80 degree temperatures and you really in the event of a tornado setup you kind of want these a little bit closer together the temperature is going to be in the mid 70s you want those dew point in the mid 60s if not closer to if not a little bit closer to what the surface tip is or vice versa but in any case here Thermodynamically, our setup is not looking impressive when it comes to severe weather, which is a good thing, honestly. So I do think hail, damaging winds are going to definitely reign supreme. Can't rule out tornadoes, but I think our threat is going to be a bit more mitigated. And really, that's what we're kind, we were kind of leaning towards with the whole we're going to catch a break thing. It wasn't necessarily that we wouldn't see severe weather, but the tornado favorability will start to drop a bit. Plenty of instability still available though around the deep south here. You can see Cape values exceeding above a thousand joules per kilogram, usually the amount that you would need for severe weather. Really, like I said, the main limiting factors are going to be forcing and moisture here. And as we go over the course of the next couple of days, we'll kind of see that continue. This is looking at Saturday here. A lot of instability over Colorado, West Texas again. Texas is going to be a hotbed for Cape throughout all the summer, so don't be surprised if you see some thunderstorms pop up and they have a little bit more oomph to them. It's because all this juice right here, this is thunderstorm food. This is thunderstorm juice, pretty much. So we go towards the following day. This is Sunday. I actually see an impressive amount of Cape here, so I'm kind of interested in seeing what Sunday will do from this point. Like I said, I'm right at the end of the model run here. It's 60 hours out. That's all I can do for this run, but... There are definitely some signals on Sunday that kind of piqued my interest a little bit. We'll have to see how it pans out from that point, though. So we'll lastly go ahead and take a look at what our simulated radar could look like. Obviously, we're not really tracking much in the way of snowstorms, but do have plenty of showers and thunderstorms to go through the deep south here and, and just really the plains in general throughout the day today. Strongest storms really look like they start to pop up a bit later in the evening. Convective mode also kind of has that look of more of a linear event. Could see some increased damaging winds. Maybe a prefrontal cell might have a shot at producing a tornado. 
see more discrete cells over here towards uh, the, the panhandles and over towards Colorado, which is kind of interesting. I do think, again, forcing might be a limiting factor, but there's a wild card in the way of the mountains here. You can get those gravity waves to go down slope here, and maybe we could get a little quick spin up. I've seen some pretty strong tornadoes occur from that within the last year, especially. Clovis, uh, Clovis New Mexico is a great example of that. But as we continue to go forward here, it's the following day. Again, similar situation, storms over towards southern te southwestern Texas and also towards eastern Colorado. I think this is, will be the day where we get some big hail from that. Then on the following day, if we can get any good kind of forcing mechanism over here towards the northern plains, we have a shot. I think we have a shot at some pretty strong storms as well. We'll have to see how things kind of pan out here. There are a couple of areas here that I'm going to be watching in regards to whether we get an outflow boundary or not, but which could be an extra point of lift, but we'll have to see how things pan out. Also could influence moisture as well. But like I said, this is only one model to look at. Other models still are in range or just now uploading. So we'll have to just, we're just working with what we got here. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Appreciate all the uh, support from the, these last couple months, especially at 880 subs. We're almost at a thousand. Uh, let's keep it going. Hit, make sure you hit that like button and hit that share button. Until next time, this entire Metalhead Weatherman, thanks for being here, and I'll see you next time.